Welcome back. In this subunit, we're going to talk about another common law rule that addresses a special issue of offer and acceptance, the mailbox rule. All right, let's begin our discussion of the mailbox rule by setting up the context. So remember, the offeror can revoke its offer, can revoke her offer at any time before the offeree accepts. But what if we have acceptance by mail? Offeree mails the acceptance or some other medium of acceptance that takes some time between dispatching the acceptance and offeror's receipt of the acceptance. Is the acceptance effective uh, upon dispatch or is it effective upon receipt? Now, why is this important? Well, we're talking about when the offeror can revoke the offer, right? We know that an offeror cannot revoke an offer once the offeree has accepted it. So, if the acceptance is effective upon dispatch, once the offeree has mailed, has dispatched the acceptance, then the offeror cannot revoke the offer. If the acceptance is not effective until the offeror receives it, then even after the offeree has dispatched the acceptance, the offeror might have time to revoke it. At least the offeror will have time to revoke the offer between the dispatch and the receipt of the acceptance. All right, let's look at the actual mailbox rule. Let's look at the substance of the mailbox rule. The mailbox rule provides that the acceptance is effective upon dispatch. So as soon as the offeree dispatches the acceptance, as soon as the acceptance is out of her control, it is effective, which means the offeror can no longer revoke the offer. Now, a different rule applies to the other assent communications. Uh, offers, revocations, and rejections, and counteroffers, these are effective upon receipt. Let's look at two examples of the application of the mailbox rule. So let's imagine that on October 1st, Mary mails an offer to Bob. On October 3rd, Bob receives Mary's offer. On October 4th, Bob mails the acceptance to Mary. On October 5th, Mary calls Bob on the phone and revokes her offer. On October 7th, Mary receives Bob's acceptance. Do the parties have a contract? Well, when will the parties have a contract? They will have a contract when uh, Bob, in this case, accepts the offer. So was Bob's uh, acceptance effective? Well, let's look at Mary's revocation. Mary tried to revoke her offer on October 5th. Did Bob accept Mary's offer before she revoked it? So we have a choice. Did Bob accept Mary's offer on October 4th? when he mailed the acceptance, or did he accept Mary's offer on October 7th when Mary received Bob's acceptance? Well, the answer is under the mailbox rule on October 4th, Bob accepted Mary's offer when he mailed the acceptance. Therefore, there was a binding contract on October 4th. Once we have a binding contract, you can no longer revoke your offer. Therefore, when Mary tried to revoke her offer on October 5th, it failed. Let's look at another example. On October 1st, Mary mails an offer to Bob. On October 3rd, Bob receives Mary's offer. On October 4th, Mary mails a revocation to Bob. October 5th, Bob mails the acceptance. October 6th, Bob receives Mary's revocation. On October 7th, Mary receives Bob ex Bob's acceptance. All right, so once again, the question is, did we have an effective acceptance? Bob can accept 
Mary's offer at any time before Mary revokes her offer. All right, so the question is, when did Mary revoke her offer? Did Mary revoke her offer on October 4th or October 6th? Well, the mailbox rule, excuse me, the mailbox rule only applies to acceptances. So an acceptance is effective upon dispatch. A revocation is effective upon receipt. When did Bob receive Mary's revocation? Well, the facts say that on October 6, Bob receives Mary's revocation. Therefore, the revocation was effective on October 6. Did Bob accept the offer before October 6? So we look on October 5th, Bob mailed the acceptance to Mary. On October 7th, Mary received Bob's acceptance. When is the acceptance effective? The acceptance is effective upon dispatch. Therefore, this acceptance was effective on October 5th. When was the revocation effective? On October 6th. The revocation was too late. Mary's, uh, Mary's attempted revocation is ineffective. A revocation is effective upon receipt. Bob did not receive the revocation until after he mailed his acceptance. There was a binding contract on October 5th. October 5th is when Bob accepted Mary's offer. Let's look at the mailbox rule in greater detail. All right, the mailbox rule says that an acceptance is effective upon dispatch, but there are other elements of the rule. So for an acceptance to be effective upon dispatch, it must be made through a reasonable medium and it must be properly dispatched. Hmm. So what happens if you mail an acceptance and you don't do it through a reasonable medium or if you don't properly dispatch it? Well, then the rule says that the acceptance is not effective until received by the offerer. All right, so you got it. If you make an acceptance through an unreasonable medium or you don't properly dispatch your acceptance, it is not effective until receipt. Ah, but there's another proviso. It's not effective until receipt unless the acceptance arrives as quickly as it would have through a reasonable medium and proper dispatch. All right, let's look at an example to try and understand this better. So let's say that on October 1st, Mary mails an offer to Bob. On October 3rd, Bob receives Mary's offer. On October 4th, Bob mails the acceptance to Mary, but he incorrectly addressed the envelope and therefore his acceptance was not properly dispatched. On October 5th, Mary calls Bob to revoke her offer. On October 9th, Mary receives Bob's acceptance. All right, so just looking at this basic fact pattern, we want to know if Bob accepted Mary's offer before she revoked it. Well, she revoked on October 5th. And so the question is, if Bob's October 4th mailing of his acceptance is not effective, then he did not accept until October 9th when Mary received Bob's acceptance. And we know that the rule says if you improperly dispatch your acceptance, it is not effective until received. Therefore, in this fact pattern, Mary revoked her offer on October 5th before Bob accepted Mary's offer on October 9th. All right, we know that Bob's acceptance was improperly dispatched. So it is effective upon dispatch only if it arrives as quickly as it would have if properly dispatched. So for us to do a proper analysis of this fact pattern, we have to look at October 9th. That's when October 9th, uh, that's when Mary received Bob's acceptance. And we have to ask ourselves, 
did Mary receive Bob's acceptance as quickly as she would have had he properly dispatched it? Without any other facts, I don't know, but if the answer is yes, then Bob's acceptance is effective on October 4th. Fun stuff, right? There is one more wrinkle to the mailbox rule that you need to understand. In certain circumstances, a strict application of the mailbox rule will come to what I will call a curious result. Here's the situation. So we said the acceptance is effective upon dispatch. So as soon as the offeree dispatches the acceptance, we have contract. But what if the offer never receives the acceptance? What if it's lost in the mail? Well, then we have a curious result. We have a contract, but the offeror never knows that there is a contract. And so the offeror inevitably will breach the contract. Now, why do we have this problem? Well, I think we have this problem because the mailbox rule was designed to prevent the offeror from revoking. It's about revocation, to prevent the offeror from revoking the offer once the offeree had dispatched the acceptance. But they inartfully drafted the rule and said that the acceptance is effective upon dispatch. Now, if the acceptance is effective upon dispatch, that means the offeror can't revoke the offer. Um, a better rule would have been to say, once the offeree dispatches the acceptance, the offeror cannot revoke the acceptance. All right. The restatement protects the offer in this situation. The restatement says that the offeror's obligations are implicitly conditioned on receipt of the acceptance. So what this is saying is that if the acceptance is lost in the mail, that the offeror will not be responsible under the contract. 